Let us prepare ourselves for worship and you switch off the handphones or put them to silent mode. Prepare tithes and offerings in advance. And as you present them as you exit after the service. It's the hour of the Lord. We are gathered here in His business and not ours. So let us now enter into the hour of worship. The call to worship is taken from Psalm 96, verses 1 to 4. O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. From today we can sing, but with our masks on. So let us let out the songs of praise that we have suppressed so long within this pandemic. Let us give glory to God for all that He has done. Please rise with me for the first hymn. To God be the glory. Jesus Christ, through whom we have 
redemption through whom we have the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. We want to thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit, O Lord, who has revealed these things to us, who has regenerated us, that we should be born as sons and daughters of God, that we are no more under the curse, but under the blessing of the God who made us, God who loves us. And this evening, Lord, we want to thank you especially that after months of uh, being suppressed not to sing in the service today, we are able to lift up our voices and sing. We want to thank you and we want to praise you. We want to thank you for these glorious and, and godly hymns that have been written for us, that we may reflect on the words of God in the form of, of music and poetry. We want to thank you and praise you for everyone who did contribute in this way. Even as we have gathered in your house this evening, Father, we pray have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us, sanctify us. That this hour of worship will be yours and truly yours, O Lord. That you will be glorified and honored. As everyone who has come, bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray to us. Amen. This is the you. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I await, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have hid themselves against me around about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for Thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. The last verse together. Salvation, Salvation belongeth unto, unto the Lord, Lord. Thy, thy blessing, blessing is upon, upon thy, thy people. Say. Thank the Lord for the reading of His Word. Welcome all of you to the blessed name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, for this evening service. I want to thank God for keeping us safe during this pandemic and we want to thank God for giving us healing of those who were affected by this. Thank God for his mercy. Scripture reading for today's sermon is taken from the book of Psalms. Psalm 1 to 7 and verse 1. Psalm 1 to 7, verse 1. A song of the knees of Solomon. I ex verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh by him. Okay. God bless 
Please rise with me. So we, before we go for pastoral prayer, we will sing another song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. At the end, after the song is over, you can rise. I understand it is yes, but after the song is over, you can rise for pastoral As we look at all these things, Lord, we are reminded of you. That unless you cause a change, nothing will change. Unless you intervene, nothing will change. 
And in the midst of all these sorrows and pain and troubles that surround us, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our hope, our guiding light, our shelter. That no matter what is going around us, around about us, we are safe in your hands. For you say it in the scriptures that we are engraved in the palm of your hands. And no, now no man can pluck us out. But it's even said in the scriptures that you work out all things for good. To them who love you, to them whom you have called to salvation. And we thank you for this hope, this comfort that we have in you, Lord Jesus. And as we come before you this evening, Lord, we also want to count our many blessings that you have showered upon us. We want to thank you for the basic needs of food to wear, food to eat, clothes to wear, a roof over our heads, a job, we can earn our income. We want to thank you, Lord, for these things. We want to thank you, oh Lord, for hearing our many prayers in the different circumstances of life and for graciously answering them. We want to thank you for the way you have restored Brother Simpson and you have brought him back again in our midst. We want to thank you for the speedy recovery, Lord, and the grace given to him. We want to pray that you continue to sustain and strengthen him. We want to pray for Sister Rajesh as she goes for her medical appointment tomorrow to come to an end. I pray your mercy be upon her that all will go well. I pray for Kani in her work. Lord, I pray that you may uh, bless her, that she may have uh, increased foot traffic at the clinic uh, to guide her. I pray for Crystal that she has has finished the studies, we will thank you as she uh, makes plans for the next phase of her life and guide and direct her. I'm going to pray for Chiman who is not able to join us because of her own commitment to a special place in the corner of the floor. I pray for Karen in her work and in all that we have entrusted to her and we bless her too. We pray, Lord, for uh, the, your people all over the world be going through different circumstances, uh, facing challenges, uh, needs in society, home, uh, in terms of health. We pray, Lord, that we learn to look up to you and wait upon you, and you may graciously provide for the needs. We pray for this pandemic. Uh, we thank you that in many parts of the world, uh, it's been eased down and borders are opening. We thank you for the big war opening of water in Singapore and Malaysia. I pray that uh, this will uh, open up many avenues of uh, uh, people's needs, emotional, finance, physical needs being met. I pray that uh, we know that you will, you know the end of this pandemic and we pray you give government wisdom to make the right decisions and people to follow. You come in the Ukraine, Russian war in your hands, Lord. Uh, we pray for your gracious intervention, Lord, and for peace, Lord. for peace and stability again. Lord, we pray even commit ourselves in your hands. We pray that this evening as we have gathered to hear your word, I pray, Lord, that you, your spirit will bring your word alive to us. That as we hear it, Lord, we may Receive it as your word and receive it with understanding and with you. Speak to us, Lord, and bless us. 
Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 1 to 7, verse 1 is text of this sermon. The title of this sermon is Vain Labor. Vain Labor. So read this verse, this verse. We see two things standing out from this verse. This except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. So we see in this verse a reminder in the word except, which means if it if it is not for God, then the building and the watching over of the city is definitely in vain. When you say something is in vain in this context, it means that it uh, it will be pointless. It be useless. Uh, that's the understanding. So we uh, in this verse. The, uh, the psalmist says here yeah, very strongly that except God is in our plans, in our efforts, nothing will materialize. So we see uh, two things here that the, uh, the psalmist is writing. He's talking about progress and protection. Progress, the word build. When you build something, you are progressing. Okay? You are looking for progression, prosperity. Um, to keep watch means protection, right? You uh, keep watch is protected. The word watchman there uh, gives us that insight. So two things of consideration here is that the idea of building is something that is that requires a lot of planning, a lot of investment, a lot of thought, a lot of effort, a lot of man hours, um, and not a, a lot of uh, money and sacrifice. All of these are involved in building, right? Even if you're going to build some Lego toys, uh, quite recently uh, when um, uh, Crystal and her, her cousins Ruth Rachel were uh, staying as uh, they were building some kind of a pyramid with some plastic magnetic ends. So it was so cute, it, you know, it just kind of attached to each other. And they were trying to build a very tall pyramid and, and they got excited as the height increased, you know. And it came to a point at the pinnacle where you had to be so careful, so delicate to place the last piece and as it always happens when you put the last piece you know the inevitable happens right um, I think even that kind of thing that something that you do for fun you know it turns into an excitement it turns into a mini project that you give all your focus you know you, you start saying don't do this don't touch you know you're so careful that you don't want the thing to collapse so even that but talk about building a house, a church, or you build, um, you're building a, uh, something for your family, for your children, you, you are uh, building um, something for the future. It takes, 
it takes a lot of time. It just cannot come out of the, um, the blue. You know, it takes effort. There's a lot of effort. And you talk about keeping watch, right? Um, you know, in Singapore, one of the uh, longest hours of work is guard duty, right? Guard, uh, security guards. Uh, it goes for 12 hours, right? So this long hours, they need to be uh, alert, they need to be watchful, you know? So while uh, they need to be that because so that, uh, the, the, let's say they're working in a condo, then the residents can sleep in peace. I know a guard is watching over my property or, you know, and so forth. So when you take this through, building and being a watchman, guarding over, it, it's, it talks about dedication, it talks about uh, the effort, you, it, it goes beyond your own comfort, you know, it, it is uh, someone who builds, he cannot, uh, he has to be there, in the field. he has to uh, be exposed to the, to the elements of the weather and so all the dangers, you know, you cannot be building something on the, by just laying down on the couch, neither can a watchman, you know, just stay in his office and then make sure that everything, he has to make his rounds. And they have all that security. I have done uh, part-time security job, so I, I know what it means to stay awake and all. So, uh, but the, the point here is this: Samis is telling us this. Except Paul is emphasizing the fact that if it is not for God, all the efforts of building. All the efforts of watching over something is redundant, is in vain. So the Samis is bringing our attention to God. I think in this time and age is very relevant. Um, I think if we, if we take this pandemic situation, it plays out well. Uh, we know that before pandemic, uh, the COVID pandemic, businesses was flourishing, right? Uh, from the food industries to the uh, airlines industry, they were flourishing and they were just building on upon what they had and they were making big mega plans. And I, I know uh, precisely of uh, the airlines industries, they were trying to build, uh, to make the, the first class coach even more comfortable, almost like a mini room, you know, you can fly first class. And right after, and many businesses were uh, thinking of expanding and hiring and so much of money and all that, but when COVID came, everything crashed. Everything was put on the shelf. And businesses have folded. You know, recently we went to um, to eat, and um, we found out that certain shops, though they may be registered on the Google, they do not exist on the physical because they are closed down. So it's a good reminder, and it goes in line with what the sum is saying: is that while we have the best of intention to progress, to prosper in life. We invest everything legally and rightfully. We make all the effort, we, we, we plan everything well. Um, we, we, we take care of, of what is ours, our family, our children, our, um, our business, whatever. The psalmist reminds us not to forget the God factor, which is the most important factor. He said, because if God does not make it tick, it is not going to work. If God is not going to make it tick, it is not going to work. And so he says, except for God, build the house. They who labor, who labor in vain, that will be. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh by him. Okay. 
See, my dear brothers and sisters, um, we know Singapore lifestyle is hectic. Once you open your eyes till you, you, you go to bed, you are uh, clockwise, you are moving clockwise in your mind, in your heart. Uh, you got to go from point A to point B, you get got to do things, you know, plan. Uh, even if you're on leave, that factor doesn't leave you, it, it chases you. It is, it is slightly forgotten when you are perhaps on the plane or on the, on the boat to Bintang or Batam. But right after even touching that first night, it comes haunting you back. You're thinking about this and that. So, Singapore lifestyle is like that. Even students, right, studying, it doesn't go away. They give you holidays, but then they give you assignments. I know that I'm going through that. So, it, it is part and parcel of our life. And it's a real thing. But the fact is, God wants to partner us. God wants to partner with us in our efforts to prosper, progress. In our efforts to take care of what He has given us. My, this, uh, this is not spoken in the negative sense. It's all in a positive sense. So as Christians, it is expected of us to work hard, right? God doesn't uh, uh, dictate how many hours we need to work. If it requires us to work 12 hours, we must work. Because if that 12 hours is going to put the bread on the table, we have to work. So we must study hard, we must plan, we must, we must keep building our lives. We must be, we, as Christians, we must always be progressing in life. Prosperity comes from the Lord. We must progress. Um, and, and as I said, uh, the things that God given to us, it's, we must be good stewards to Ensure that it is well kept, right? If we are united in marriage, then it is our duty to be good stewards to preserve our marriage. If God has given us children in the marriage, it is our duty to take care of our children. Or if God has given us relationship in, in the family, it's our duty to preserve even relationship. Uh, so there's so much going on, and as I said, God wants to be a partner in our life. God wants it. The problem is we do start off partnering with God. Right? Um, we do pray, say God, you know, if you, if, if you do this for me, right, you know, I will do this, you know, we kind of, kind of rope God into our deal, you know, which is, uh, we all do. But as soon as our plans take off, for a time and season, we are still in partnership. But as soon as we flourish, as soon as our dreams come uh, uh, fulfilled, as soon as we um, gain ground in life, as soon as we progress and we prosper, things change. Things change in the, uh, to the point that our 50-50 partnership with God becomes we 70, God 20, uh, not 30. So God's partnership, in our sense, it diminishes because we do not give importance to his punishment. We give importance to the point that we say, I can't come to church today. I, I can't give my tithes and all. I, 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 I'm too busy to do this. I got plans. Because we already reached a certain place. So what happened to the God factor? Who brought us to that point where we are? To the point that we are so busy Imagine the reverse that you and I are unemployed, 
we try job interview after job if we don't get and we don't have an income then we are always pleading to God 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 help them but when God has brought us to that point we suddenly forget who was actually in charge of our life who was actually driving uh, who was the uh, the captain of our boat you know so here is a reminder when this evening as we have come into the fourth month of 2022 and as we are breaking out from this pandemic with a lot of uh, restrictions lifted and a lot of um, doors of opportunity to flap our wings and fly again where we can dream dreams where we can make plans you know it's a reminder that if it was if it was not for God we would not have come this far and if it is not for God we will not go any further so as we read Psalm 1271 um, it's a warning that we owe our prosperity and our protection God alone. And we must always remember that. Let us not give up dreaming. Let us not give up building. Let us not give up making that effort to progress and prosper in life, at the same time let us keep our eyes on God and our hearts firmly grounded on God alone. So, my prayer is, as you go back this evening, this one verse, wonder over it. And let us use that as a compass to check
Father, thank you that we found in your house and worship today. Thank you for reminding us that it is you who is in charge of our life, of our progress, prosperity, and protection. And help us, Lord, to never forget that and always be in line with you, Lord. Forgive us that we have forgotten or we have pushed you to second place. Now, Lord, send us back with your blessings. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Rest and abide with us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, just um, two announcements. One is our Zoom Bible study on Tuesday evenings at 7.30. So we we'll welcome you to join. And then an advanced announcement that for Good Friday and Easter, we'll have combined service uh, with the Tamil congregation, 10.30 a.m. on Friday, Good Friday, and 10.30 a.m. on Easter Sunday. So on both uh, days, there will not be additional English service. God bless you and have a blessing with you. I hate the services over.